How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through my transfer plan for the upcoming Game Week 7. So Game Week 7 is going to be an interesting one. If you guys haven't seen over on Twitter and Discord, I've activated the wildcard. So yes, wildcard week has officially started. But like with every transfer plan, I'm going to start off with a reflection of how Game Week 6 is going, with one game left happening tonight. Then we're going to jump into all that Game Week 7 goodness, and I'm going to showcase why I actually activated the wild card. So if that's something you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So let's go over Game Week 6, a pretty interesting game week to be honest, with the majority of the F4 community using their wild card chip, but that not resulting in many points. Now as mentioned tonight, we still have one game left to play, it's going to be Southampton taking on Bournemouth, and a lot of managers actually own Semenyo, so if he does well, my rank will probably drop slightly. Currently, I've got 52 points total, which is above the average for those wildcarders, but they have one left player to feature. Now overall, 52 points wasn't even enough to secure a massive green arrow. I'm currently on a slight green one, but I'll probably turn into more of a grey one. So no rank at the moment, as mentioned throughout the kind of game weeks before this. Game week 10 is the first week, we'll look at the rank, and there's so much that can happen between now and then. So if you guys need a little bit of a kind of booster, don't worry about your rank at the current moment. I know game week 6 might have been a tough one. But now let's go over where those 52 points came from on our bench. No points were going to be needed. Winks, Harwood, Bella still plays tonight, and then Johnson with zero. So currently Winks only bench coverage, but I'm pretty sure Harwood, Bella should feature tonight. But my full starting 11 featured, so no kind of bench requirements. Now starting goalkeeper Henderson is going to be disappointing as usual. When he plays an easier team, he usually doesn't get the clean sheet. Exactly what happened in game week 6 against Everton. I had some hope here, Everton's attack hasn't been the best this Premier League season, but he conceded a few and therefore ended on one point. Just one of the reasons that I probably would activate the wild card is to get rid of him, but he has come in quite cheap though. A player not so cheap is going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold at 7.0 million, and he only got one point. So overall Liverpool didn't play their kind of best, especially defensively, against the poor Wolves side, and if you guys want to go see the goal that they conceded, it was a pure defensive disaster class. So Trent may be a little bit unfortunate to concede, but no attacking returns also came his way, so he ended up blanking. Same for Konza, who got one point, had some kind of hope for Aston Villa against Ipswich, but he conceded two goals to Delap. Aston Villa simply haven't been keeping many clean sheets, don't seem like the best defensive side, and no kind of last minute goal to save us this game week. Surprisingly enough, the only clean sheet came from Pedro Porro to 10 Man United, but he also racked up a yellow card late into the fixture and therefore ended up on 5 points. Don't think any bonus points would have come his way, he was close to them though, but the yellow card just cemented kind of no bonus. Overall had a little bit more hope after the kind of 10 men that he would get an attacking return, just hasn't been kind of fulfilling them this Premier League season. Now Midford Apartment actually came in clutch for game week 6, starting off with Salah for 10 points. Now the big kind of debate this week was kind of dropping Salah on the wild card for someone like a sucker. So happy to have hold on to him as he outperformed the English international. Now my only regret here was not captaining him. If you guys watched my scuff live stream from the hotel on Saturday, was really tempted to put the armband on the Egyptian. Overall though, didn't kind of have the courage to do it, but wish I had, as he outperformed Haaland by quite a far margin. Now what I will say though, is Salah definitely didn't have the best game in this fixture, but a penalty goal and three bonus points cemented a double digit return. Just one of those things these kind of better F4 assets do, even when they play badly, they still get you points, unlike someone like an Eze who blanked once again. So probably one of the reasons I activated the wildcard was going to be to get rid of Eze, my Crystal Palace options haven't been performing, and this was against a pretty poor Everton side. So Eze at the moment is a very kind of conflicting option, he's putting up some good stats, but if you guys do own him, would probably ship him on, just too many other options at the same price point outperforming him. So it wasn't going to be a good buy for us with an Eze double digit return, I think only the one return this Premier League season. Elise Rogers got off the mark for his first goal and a 7-pointer, only concern was a sub around the 60-minute mark. Now this might have been because of injury or precaution, haven't really seen too much news on it but there was some speculation. Just seems like a great option though at his price point as long as he's going to be fit. I won't lie the Aston Villa kind of attackers did save my game week, as the most wildcarders actually benched him for someone like a Colvert Lewin. Now the only transfer we made was going to be a Bumo in for Jota that we made about a week before the deadline, and that transfer ended up being clutch as he got a 9-pointer. Was a little bit disappointed though as he did score quite early on and no attacking returns came after that, but 9 points isn't too shabby. 
Also added to that, Jota racked up an assist, but Mbuma still outperformed him, so that transfer was really worth it. But as mentioned, the midfield department kind of carried our game week quite a lot. Returns from Salah, Rogers, as well as Mbumo. In the forward line, it wasn't the same story for our captain, Erling Haaland. You could never really back the early kickoff. So don't you know what happened yet? Erling Haaland did have a few chances, but wasn't his best game, as Man City drew to a poor Newcastle side. Now, we'll admit Newcastle did step it up for this game. They haven't been great for the previous game weeks, but against Man City, really looked strong. Hard to predict, though, that Erling Haaland would blank. That's why the Salah captaincy was just so much better after that Haaland blank. Started the game week off pretty badly. Ended the game week, though, a lot better with Ollie Watkins and his goal plus assist equaling 11 points. He was kind of the main reason I didn't wildcard in game week 6. Just thought that Ipswich fixture was too hard to ignore and wanted him, and he's got off to a pretty decent start to the Premier League season. So that 11-pointer hopefully will cement a tiny green arrow, as unfortunately Jamie Vardy couldn't do anything for us. At least his team and Leicester overall did actually score against Arsenal. That's all I wanted for the Game Week 6 wildcard. So even though it wasn't Vardy, maybe his contribution to a pre-assist could have been there, as James Justin scored two goals against them. Just really wish one of those was going to be for Jamie Vardy, as that would have been pure differential points. But I guess it wasn't meant to be no Vardy party for this Game Week. And he's probably a sell on my wildcard, to be honest. But at the moment, looking pretty strong, depending on what happens tonight for Bournemouth versus Southampton. If Semenya goes large, we might be seeing a slight red arrow. At the current moment, though, outperforming the wildcard average, which you love to see. But you guys, let me know how many points you guys scored if you wildcarded. Was it a success or a disaster? Don't worry, though. It's only one game week. You have to judge a wildcard on a few more, though. Also, let me know if you guys are happy with your rank at the current moment. Don't put too much emphasis on it as it's very early in the season, but hopefully it was a great game week for all of us. Now let's head on to that game week 7 preview and I'm going to show you guys my current team selection before the wild card and showcase why I actually activated the chip. Now I mentioned this over on Twitter earlier today but I actually regret activating it slightly as the starting 11 for game week 7 wasn't actually too bad. Now I've won free trance in 0.4 in the bank so what you guys can do is as I go through my team at the end you can tell me if I should have activated it or not and whether you agree with my regret at the moment. So starting off on the bench, and like every game week, the bench is exactly the same. Bentley, Winks, Howard, Bellis, and Johnson. So if we do need some bench coverage, I guess Winks has Bournemouth at home, not the worst fixture in the world, but probably a two-pointer from him. Then between the sticks, we've got Henderson against Liverpool at home, and I probably can see them scoring a few goals here. But like with Henderson this entire season, against the easier teams, he doesn't do anything, but against the better teams, he seems to get some saves. So it could be a masterclass from him against Liverpool. On the other side of the coin flip, I've got Trent against Crystal Palace away. This should be a proper game. Clean sheet potential as well as attacking returns. Cons against United at home just looks better without Bruno in that midfield apartment. But at the moment, Aston Villa can't even buy a clean sheet. Same could be said about Pedro Porro, except Spurs kept one against United. But against Brighton away, I can see them scoring, but there could be attacking returns. Just seems like Spurs at the moment are a little bit kind of shaky defensively. But are great going forward, but I don't think Pedro Porro is a bad hold to be honest. Then our midfoot apartment Salah against Crystal Palace, the historic game week fixture. If you guys don't remember, Liverpool won 9 0 and Salah got no attacking returns. Could the same happen in game week 7? But definitely a pretty strong hold, I would keep him if you guys do have him. The fixture looks pretty decent. Then, like with Henderson Trent, opposite we've got Eze against Liverpool, who have become a little bit worse defensively, in my opinion. As a Liverpool fan watching them, they look a little bit shaky. So Eze always does step it up against the better teams, so that could happen here. But as mentioned, I probably would sell him if I don't wildcard. Rogers against United, great fixture, and Aston Villa have been attacking very nicely. Just hope he wasn't injured when he was substituted off. We will get an update though, and as far as I know, Aston Villa will play some European football. So no need to stress about this one. But then finally, Mbumo against Wolves that have been conceding. Great pick at the moment as the main talisman for Brentford. Now up front, once again, our captain, Erling Haaland against Fulham at home, expecting Haaland to bounce back after the blank in game week 6. Pep sides usually like this after they drop points, the next game week they usually bang. So let's see what happens in game week 7 with this Kamsi armband. Then Watkins against United, as mentioned, this fixture actually looks pretty good after game week 6. And I can see Aston Villa scoring here and doing pretty well. One of the main reasons I'm a little bit concerned about wildcarding is I probably won't have Oli Watkins, and he could really do well this game week. Then the last option, Jamie Vardy against Bournemouth at home. Now I've lost a little bit of faith in Jamie Vardy and Bournemouth are actually a pretty good side at the moment. But at home, I guess he could always do well. 
If you do have them though, you probably just keep them, and that's why if I didn't wildcard, I'd probably just play them. But I'm just waiting for that rotation to take place. But as you guys can see with this starting 11, I don't really think I needed to wildcard. I activated the chip over on Saturday and come the Sunday fixtures, Aston Villa and United. That United fixture just looks better and better. And chances are I probably don't have Konza or Watkins on my wildcard. So some slight regret was going to be there, but I guess if my Game Week 7 wildcard team absolutely bangs, that regret will definitely go away. But interested to see what your guys' thoughts are on this team and the wildcard. With one free chance and 0.4 in the bank, I probably would take Eze out for Martinelli, Trossard, or maybe a Johnson from Spurs. Taking that into account, the team looks better than with that transfer, as at least I have some Arsenal Spurs coverage. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on my Discord server. Also, if you guys are on the wildcard, what's your latest draft looking like? So now going on to the transfer plan for the upcoming game week, and I've kind of already spoiled this with the wildcard news, but I have actually activated the chip on Saturday. A few price rises have happened. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the Solanke one last night as he wasn't predicted to rise. That's just a classic F4 situation. Literally didn't drop it all when he was sold by so many people, but now that he scored six points in game week six, he's risen in price. But it is what it is, as mentioned. If I do want to go for him, I'll just buy him for 0.1 more million. Not what you want to see on a wild card though. But I have activated the chip and the first draft will be coming tomorrow, so make sure those bonifications are turned on or you guys are following me on Discord or Twitter. Those links are in the description if you guys want to update them. But super excited for wildcard week to officially commence. I don't know if you guys agree with me activating the chip or not, but I've done it anyways, so there's no looking back. I'm really excited to showcase what my first draft will be looking like. What you guys can do is comment down below if you guys are also on the wildcard and what your draft also looks like. Maybe I can get some inspiration from those comments. Also, let me know how game week 6 went. Was it a good week, a bad week, or a super bad week? As mentioned, don't worry about the rank too much as we're still quite early in the season. But this is basically a wrap for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. Tons of content coming up for Wildcard Week. So make sure those notifications are turned on. But for the time being, I'm Isaiah. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.